Killer Crew Presents. Have you heard of Soccer Nation? No? I'm not surprised. This game is an almost classic. If fully realized, it could have changed football gaming. As you will see, members of the development team did go on to influence and change the world of sports gaming. So let's take a trip back 25 years to the conception of a great vision. In the mid 90s, the internet was the new kid on the block. It was a vast new frontier and it was making its way from being a tech novelty into every household. It was confusing to some. See, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. um, Katie said she thought it was about. But presented new opportunities to others. Yeah, right. Oh, with America Online. America Online can do all that. Yeah. How about sending your mom? Online gaming was growing rapidly, with new ways to connect computers all across the world, with games like Doom pushing the envelope. Football gaming was no exception, of course, with FIFA incorporating network play from FIFA 97. There were also text-based management games like Hattrick that went online in 1997. But even before those games spearheaded the onset of online footy games, there was an ambitious vision of an online footballing world, combining action and management with a 3D engine. This vision was Soccer Nation. Conceived by John Dean sometime in 1995 and conceptualized with the help of his team at Crush, it was originally meant to be the first in a nation sports series, with racing and basketball being discussed as follow-ups. With the help of a local businessman, he managed to attract the attention of a company that was previously only known for its console releases. Japanese giant Sunsoft. Sunsoft was considered one of the premier publishers for the NES, having released such classics as Batman, Gremlins 2 and Mr. Gimmick. Later in the process, Ocean was contracted to distribute the game. Now armed with a great concept and backed by one of the biggest game publishers in the world, Crush set out to change the world of football gaming. John and his studio Crush had previously developed a very innovative shooter called Mortal Coil, which, to paraphrase a PC Gamer review, was ambitious and way ahead of its time and had everything you would want from a shooter except good gameplay. The game was a squad-based first-person shooter with some of the features that a few years later would make Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon a barn burner. Innovation was always important to John and his team and they brought this ideal of ambition and innovation along to their next project, Soccer Nation. Screenshots from the game's development process shows that arcade and online functionality were being put into the game at an early stage. The 3D looks very much mid-90s. It might look archaic to the modern viewer, but in 1995 our experience of 3D soccer was Graham Soonis Vector Soccer. I actually prefer the way the game looked here to the more saturated look of the released version. This version just looks more interesting to me. Work started around 1995 and by mid-1997 the game had come far enough that a big marketing campaign was put in place. Crush produced a 5 minute promotion video that shows gameplay and has a lot of examples of the voice acting. TV spots were also produced which ran in late 1997. That guy looked familiar right? Yeah, it's Jason Statham. There's even casting footage from this video still in existence. Soccer Nation was supposed to be the first in the Nation sports series, with more sports to follow in a similar frame. There were several previews in big gaming magazines like Edge, PC Format, PC Zone and Computer and Video Games in July and August of 1997. These previews details the plans for the game. The idea was to create the most realistic and advanced soccer game that has ever been produced, as Crush themselves put it, where you take the role of manager or player manager and pit your wits against thousands of other managers online. The visions are all along grand, 2.5 million virtual players with their own personalities to choose from, 8.5 million ways to build your stadium and so on. 
There is also some healthy questioning of these grand ideas in the articles, but for the most part the previews were very positive and drummed up some real excitement for this game. CNVG even gave Soccer Nation a full page, with the promise of a playable preview in the next issue. The concept incorporated an elaborate system for dynamic advertising that up to that point was unheard of in sports gaming. Virtually every marketable surface in the game, from branding on the ball, shirts and field, to the blimp passing over, were for sale and could be changed by updates. Big companies were buying in already in the development stage, like Nike, Eurosport and McDonalds. Meanwhile, in the later stages of development, a Spanish company named Proain acquired the rights to release a Spanish version of the game. Proain wanted an immediate release and used a touched up development version. This version was a single player game that did not feature the arcade or online parts of the Soccer Nation concept. They called it Football Pro The Sport Interactive. Obviously trying to draw sales by referring to a certain other company in the business. The Spanish game reportedly did okay in sales, and it came in a big box with a printed manual. CMVG did not have a review in the next issue, or the issue after that. Instead, the game was on the brink of cancellation. After three years and two million pounds put into development, the team got a call from Sunsoft, who pressured by the Japanese financial crisis of the late 90s, had decided to cancel all overseas projects to save jobs in Japan. And the ref blows for this full left time. the game with no financing and crash folded. When the assets were sold on, the whole team was fired. Some of the team were later rehired to allow the new owners of the assets to finish the game, but John Dean moved on to other things. The crash assets were acquired by Attica Interactive. They stripped the project down into a single player game similar to the Spanish release. The original developers had felt the game needed a few more months of refining before release, especially the AI in the match engine. Attica chose to only put out the worst fires and rushed it to market without arcade gameplay and online functionality. While the online part was still advertised, it was never, to my knowledge, realized. Attica also felt the game needed another push, and in the spirit of the times they licensed a famous footballer. One of the few Englishmen ever to be a hero in Ireland, Jack Charlton. The game's final form was born, Jack Charlton's Soccer Nation. The game was released sometime in the summer of 1998, but seems to have been almost immediately abandoned by Attica. The release text and the promise of an upcoming online league reads exactly the same on Wayback captures from 1998 and 2005. I got my CD from that competition the website mentions, but I'm not sure how many other CDs were actually distributed. I don't ever remember seeing this game in the store, but they do occasionally turn up on eBay. The CD is really bare bones, it's just a jewel case. Mine never came in a box, and this is the way the eBay listings I've seen have been too. Concept art for a possible box design was produced during the crush days though. The insert is just a once folded paper. This is the entirety of the contents of the physical manual. There is a game manual on the CD and it's actually very detailed. So how about the game itself? Well, it's completely unlicensed. But if you don't mind playing with fantasy players and fantasy teams, then there's actually a lot of options and a lot of depth here. The league creation tool is quite powerful and it works really well. You can create elaborate league structures with parallel divisions and you can create leagues with promotions, relegations and even playoffs. With the creation tool you can change the names of the divisions, but not the names of teams or players. For that you'll have to wait until the league is created. I have to point out that those standard Windows controls originally had a green background like this, but that doesn't show up in Windows 10, making them really difficult to read. But once you get to the team selection screen, you can create teams and kits. The auto-generated names of teams and players are okay, at least the Swedish names. However, if you create too many divisions, it runs out of names and you get some crazy names in there. But I can't actually get the kit editor to work in the creation process, only once I'm inside the game, and then I can only change the kit of my own team. 
and that's a bummer. I'm not sure if it's because it's running on modern hardware or if it's just a bug in the game. Once you make it to the main menu, you're met with an almost overwhelming number of options, which is reminiscent of those German games that no one could figure out, like Football Limited. There are about 40 items just in the main menu, but once you get this menu system figured out, you find an in-depth management game here. There are your standard options like choosing your formation, choosing your playstyle and moving your players around in the formation. But there is also a much deeper side to this, where you can set a lot of options for how each player behaves on the field. This works on a position basis, any player playing in that position will have the same instructions. The game also includes the type of zonal based tactic system that was the standard at the time. There are of course also things you can do on the business side of things, like checking your finances or expanding and customizing the stance of your stadium. Now that we've messed around in the menus for a while, it's time to take the 3D match engine for a test drive. Hello again, it promises to be a fascinating match and to help me through it I have the company of Mandy Bakewell. How do you see the match going then? Mandy. I hope it doesn't go on for too long Ralph. Well. I've had a couple of shandies and I've got a really weak bladder. <laughs> in the stadium you're greeted by the team of commentators. As is the norm there's a play by play guy and a color commentator and the color commentators actually rotate between five or six different ones. Most of these characters are fictitious including play by play guy Ralph Rutter but two of the color commentators are actual football players Dean Holdsworth and Ray Wilkins. So how does it play? Well it's okay. It looks sufficiently like a football game to amuse me for a while. I'm not sure that all of the tactical instructions were actually implemented, but it's hard to tell because there are so many you don't know what is kicking in when. So the tactical aspects need more testing before I give a final verdict. One thing that is immediately evident is that the goalkeepers are complete crap, they can't save anything. On Windows 10 I can so far only get the match engine running in hardware mode, which has some graphical glitches as you can see. In software mode, the colors look okay, but it's excruciatingly slow. Substitutions and tactics adjustments are made through an overlay, which even 25 years later slows the game down to a crawl. But it works, and it has the features you'd expect. So what do I think about Soccer Nation as a whole? Well. At the heart, there's a feature-rich footy management game that has all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a game at that time, and a lot of customizability. And if you don't mind creating your own league or playing with fantasy teams and players, this would have been a great option in 1998, and it's actually still enjoyable today. The 3D match engine is so-so, and the commentators range from cringeworthy to okay. But as a whole, this is a decent game that had a lot of untapped potential. And you can feel a sting of regret that Crush were not allowed to take this all the way to the finish line. In hindsight, the Soccer Nation concept may have been too advanced for a world where most people still connected to the internet by dial-up modem. The vision of Soccer Nation and Nation Sports was way ahead of both the technology and the internet infrastructure of the late 90s, but it was still a great vision, as time would eventually tell. When Crash folded, John Dean almost lost his house. He pulled up stakes and moved to the States, where he worked for Electronic Arts for many years, serving as executive producer on some sports games you may have heard of. He also served as the head of EA Salt Lake. Now he shares his experience working for industry giants like Atari, Electronic Arts, Midway and many others by giving talks and teaching game production courses at university while running his own business consulting company. Many other members of the Crush team went on to have long careers in the games industry. Dan Bailey, the lead designer, later worked on the Batman Arkham series and the Bioshock franchise. He also worked on a few FIFA iterations and a host of Sid Meier games from Civ 4 and onwards. 
The art director Tony Jackson went on to serve as the lead animator on the Crisis series and more recently on Sonic Team Racing. He also worked on Rise, Son of Rome. Then there's Dave. Dave worked as a tester and project coordinator on Soccer Nation and is credited as one of the designers. His full name is David Rutter. He headed the development of FIFA for many years and is often credited with creating FIFA Ultimate Team, which, at its heart, has the Soccer Nation vision of an online action management hybrid shared by thousands of fans. Mr. Rutter has worked on a lot of big football franchises, but the first football gaming project he worked on was Soccer Nation. Everyone can see the level of talent that was on the original team given their subsequent track records, and given the circumstances they may have been just a few months away from making a real impact on the history of football gaming. 25 years after its original conception, it's definitely worth a look, if you can find a copy. If nothing else, at least to experience a piece of forgotten gaming history and to think of what might have been.